Welcome to the J1 League Goal Zone. Six matches left to play and six teams still in with a shout for the title. Not only the championship up for grabs, AFC qualification still very much in the air and relegation survival also red hot. A few rearranged fixtures from round 26 in midweek. Goals from Eduardo and Elba on either side of half-time sent Yokohama five points clear at the top of the league after a 2-1 win against Kyoto. Kawasaki remained second but lost some ground on the Marinos after a 1-1 draw away with Nagoya. Cerezo moved up to fourth after a 1-0 win over Urawa, while relegation threatened Vissel Kobe and the valuable three points with a 2-1 home win over Tokyo. The weekend saw Sagan taking on the Antlers, Cerezo on the road to play Jubilo and Kawasaki heading to Kashiwa for their fixture. The leaders, the Mariners, were at home against Consadole while a relegation battle saw Kobe and Gambol on board. Sagan fell to Cerezo in their previous round and that left them with just one win from their last four. They faced a Kashima side who'd seen a drop in form of late, with no wins in four, seeing them slip further away from their title hopes. Rish Rosh and Ron has your comment. Nice combination down the left hand, left hand side. Here comes Diego. Second ball picked up by Iwasaki. Shot comes in on the rebound. Naganuma just drifted into the area. Sao to Izumi. Diego's lost it in midfield as Iwasaki turns and fires one from range. Sloppy touch in midfield from Diego Batusa. Good effort. Iwasaki took a bit of a deflection as well. It's back out to him for a throw in. Finds Fukuta. Lovely work in the area, and that is a brilliant goal by Taise Miyashiro. Wonderful work in the penalty area. Let's have a look at this bit of skill. And that's a really good finish as well through the legs of Hayakawa. Played some really good football. Created chances, they looked dangerous. They kept uh, Kashima Antlers away from their goal. It's, uh, Naganuma skips away from his marker, sends a cross in. Header from Honda. Gets the frame of the goal. Wonderful cross. Gucci. That's <laughs> really good defending from Iwasaki. And good of the referee to play the advantage, although perhaps Iwasaki might have wanted a free kick, considering how things have panned out here. Hirose with the cross! Oh! Out at the back post! Good work from uh, Diego. Set it up for Hirose on that cross and a header from Arta will be credited to him, but it's taken a huge deflection off Na uh, Naganuma. Suzuki. It's dummy, he needs to cut it back and now release Nakama. Cross blocked at the near post by Irkyu. Fukuta into Ono. Miyashiro, shot takes a deflection and needed a save from Hayakawa. The referee has finally decided to blow for full time. Arta unhappy with the assistant referee, but uh, decisions aside, and it ends here at full time. At the Ekimae Real Estate Stadium, Sagan Tosu 1, Kashima Antlers 1. Another blow for Jubilo as they picked up a loss last time out, and that's four games out of five. Things looked to get worse as Cerezo came into this one with back-to-back -back wins and within touching distance of the top three. And Cerezo stated their claim to this contest midway through the first half. After winning the ball in the middle of the park, it fell to Hinata Kida. He threaded it through to Adam Taggart, who danced round one defender and kept a cool head with that smart left-footed finish. Into the second half now, and a move that certainly deserved a goal for Jubilo. 
As the ball's pumped in towards Kenyu Sugimoto, he provides a wonderfully cushioned chest down for Shota Kaneko, but he had to stretch to make contact and couldn't find the target. A 51st minute break from Cerezo had them looking for a second goal, where the chance fell to Taggart, this time it was on his right foot, deflected wide. But they benefited from the resulting corner. Hit deep to where Ryosuke Shindo was waiting. He jumps well and Cerezo have a 2-0 lead. But there was still plenty of time for Jubilo to make an impression on this game. Here in the 57th minute, making good use of space, Mahiro Yoshinaga picks up the ball, plays it across the penalty area where Kaneko is waiting and he picks his spot beautifully. Now 2-1 down with 20 minutes left. The free-flowing football that Jubilo are well capable of made Cerezo pay. Yoshinaga with the telling ball into the box. Shindo sticks his foot out to try and defend it, but he can't get it right. And that's an own goal to tie the game up. Ten minutes left for one of these sides to find a winner. Taggart gets through on the left-hand side, puts the outside of his right boot on it, and that's turned away by Ryuki Miura. Last chance for Jubilo in the 87th minute. Laid off and set up beautifully for Ko Matsubara. But Keisuke Shimizu's top hand keeps that one out and the spoils are shared. Kashiwa, with a distant shot at the title, continued to struggle as they were handed a loss and had conceded 12 goals in their last three. Kawasaki would be looking to capitalize on their defensive frailties and bag the three points to keep them alive in the title race. Here's Roshan once again. The Miyagi, who's moved deep in field. Obayashi, going to release Noborizato. And that's a poor clearance from Sasaki, picked up by Chanatip into Kobayashi. The early shot on the turn, Yu Kobayashi, angle was against him. There's Matteo Savio with six for the campaign. A decent effort from range. Matteo Savio quick on the turn. It really is frightening when you think about the quality and the talent available in this country. The type of players they're producing. And one of them here, Tachi Banada, looking to open the scoring for Frontale. Uh, first effort on target. He's cleaning up so well in the middle of the park, Joao Schmidt. Gaining possession for his side. Ready on a number of occasions. In this first half is Ienaga. Gets it back from Miyagi. Ienaga. Kobayashi with space. Finds the back of the net. Yu Kobayashi with his third goal of the season. After some wonderful control play from Kawasaki Frontale. This gives Sasaki the eyes. Goalkeeper thinks he might be going towards the far post. Just closes his boot as he connects with the ball. Puts it past him. Here's Koyamatsu, neat turn away from Schmidt. Into Douglas, space to hit one. That was a pretty good attempt from Douglas. Just yell. Just pull it out by Hosoya and it drops to Douglas. And they have gotten the equaliser. Wouldn't give defenders any time to breathe. Aggressive against Jessiel. Just loses his balance. And Hosoya holds off Taniguchi as well. And it drops to Douglas. He gets his fourth goal of the campaign. You know how important that winner is in this one. Here's Jessiel. Oh, he's left it. That shot from range by Tono. Saved that full stretch by Masato Sasaki. This title race could just be pushed towards Yokohama and specifically towards the F Marinos with this result. And they'll be disappointed with themselves that they were only able to come away with a point. As it ends here, Kashiwa Reisol 1, Kawasaki Frontale 1. Shonan had managed only one win in their last eight and would be desperate to stop their slide into relegation trouble. A tough task ahead then against Urawa, with the visitors having suffered just one loss in their last four. 
eight minutes into the game, Shonan on the attack and a low curling cross invites Yusuke Segawa to stoop, but he can't conquer, heading just wide. Another headed chance for Shonan in the 30th minute, but despite only being six yards from goal, Hirokatsu Ishihara completely mistimes his jump and can't find the target. A double chance for Urawa in the 37th minute. Kasper Junker with the shot, well saved by the goalkeeper, and the rebound over the bar. The last decent chance of the game fell to Shonan. And it was a fine speculative effort from Hiroyuki Abe. Shusaku Nishikawa read it well though, turned that one away. This one ends goalless. When we come back, the league leaders are in action and a relegation battle is on hand in Kobe. Stay with us. You're watching the J1 League Goal Zone. No other place brings you all of the highlights from Japan's top division, and the action keeps coming thick and fast. Nagoya made it three games without defeat as they held Kawasaki to a draw last time out. A good record to take into their fixture against San Frecce. The visitors, with their five game winning streak, halted recently, but they'd be gunning for three points and a possible shot at the title. Here's Jejamit Singh. Looking slightly dangerous here, it's got to be a good ball in, but it's an important foot that got away and they're still going for goal there, almost. Great save from Osako. Soma, can you get a good ball in? Well, this looks dangerous and, uh, well, what a great save that time from Osaka. He's done it once again. It was a lovely ball played right across uh, by Soma. Ball stolen away this time and uh, almost getting the goal. Is this the opening goal? No. Somehow they keep it up. Nanga failed to capitalize on that. He shot it directly, but well, Yamashita should have done a lot better with that. It was a great save for uh, two. Osaka's, Osaka's uh, credit. Well, almost that time. And uh, Heroes uh, will be disappointed. And the referee has uh, blown for full time here at the Toyota Stadium. Few uh, exchanges here between the two sides, and well, good smiles all around uh, between the managers. And uh, just to uh, give you a confirmation, it is uh, Nagoya Grampus nil, Sefecha Kiyoshima nil. Avispa had been struggling with their form of late, having failed to win any of their last eight and collecting six losses during that period. Shimizu had lost only the once in their last seven and would be favoured to take this one. Based on the events of the first half hour, the form book looked like a very good read. How about Ronaldo as a force of nature, working his way down the left-hand side and then forcing a save from Masaki Murakami, not once, but twice. Just before the half hour mark, Shimizu now working their way down the left through Rion Yamahara, who plays the ball into the box, but it misses everyone and strolls into the net for the opening goal. But then the underdog started to turn things around. First with a deft free kick from Shun Nakamura, his first J1 goal. And then from a 42nd minute corner, badly defended from Shimizu, Yuya Yamagishi taking advantage. Initially, the referee and his assistant disallowed the goal for some argy-bargy in the box. But upon review, this one was held up meaning the home team went into the break 2-1 up and they didn't hang around in the second half either. 
just four minutes in and a wonderful one-two involving a Yordi crew back heel and a Yamagishi finish made it 3-1. With still a half hour to play, there was plenty of hope left for Shimizu and an entanglement of legs on the edge of the box gave them a 58 minute penalty. Ronaldo brought down by Shun Nakamura. Thiago Santana's uneasy run up sends the goalkeeper the wrong way and it's 3-2. Their big chance to equalize came with five minutes left. Katsuhiro Nakayama meeting the corner on the volley, but it's straight at Murakami in goal. All three points to Avispa. The Marinos solidified their spot at the top with a third straight win and will be looking to extend that run against Consadole, who came into this one on back-to-back -back wins. But having won eight straight home games would certainly give Yokohama the edge over their visitors. Shazad Hack has your commentary here. Up. I don't know who was a former Marinos player and in a good place here Mizunuma into the side netting Mizunuma now Marco Junior looking at options here back to Mizunuma that's a very decent ball in for Anderson Lopez that looping head off the crossbar that came off his shoulder didn't it that's why I had that odd loop it's Ogashiwa lovely work from him out towards Lucas Fernandez gonna cut inside trying to curl it in and it isn't far away well he knew what he was gonna do he was looking to get it onto his right foot oh he's got behind the defense there Kaneko just had to pull it back a bit Shunta Tanaka with the shot and straight at the keeper Shunta Tanaka shot, took it first time, which was the right thing to do. Oh, that was a decision. Poor, really. So Gelo has to make that save, and it's a little hand in apology. Just a heavy touch from him, and he realised, I better just get back. There's a rumour going for goal. Decent ball. Well, it was an important save. Done really well. Kuroki does his duty there. Gonna clear the ball. Oh, and it was almost inevitable that the former striker, Anderson Lopez, scores against his old team. Hold on. There is a check going on at the moment. Was there a foul by Fujita along the way? <laughs> and we might have this scratched off. I don't know how many times you need to see that? that it's got to be scratched off. No goal. It is scratched off. Here is uh, Kaneko. Machop already trying to make an impact. He really has been someone within Thailand they highly rate. Kaneko! Oh, that's a great bit of work from him. But equally a decent save there from Takaoka. It is dropped points for Yokohama F. Marinos. Relatively informed, Consolo de Sapporo continue this decent run of theirs at the moment. Ends here at the Nissan Stadium. Yokohama F. Marinos nil, Consolo de Sapporo nil. Tokyo had been winless in their last three and would therefore be keen to bounce back against an out of form Kyoto. The visitors had just one win from nine and another loss could see them fall into dangerous territory. An early chance for Tokyo from the dead ball, but Leandro's free kick never quite had the right shape. Nine minutes later, at the other end of the field, and Shohei Takeda from distance, comfortably gathered by Jakub Slow. Just after the quarter hour mark, Leandro threading the ball through to Tokyo's Diego Oliveira, 
looked comfortable enough for the goalkeeper, but Shogo Asada got there just in time to make sure. But it was well worth waiting 28 minutes for the first goal of the game. Kashi Banyagande setting up Leandro. What a strike. So 1-0 at the half and here come Tokyo again in the 55th minute. Oliveira charging forward, latching onto the return ball and forcing a save from Naoko Kami Fukumoto. But look how close to an equaliser Kyoto came with 12 minutes left. Daiki Kaneko wins the ball, sends it across the face of the goal. It gets the merest of touches and that's enough to put Kosuke Shirai off his stroke. A very close call for Tokyo. But only seconds later they break down the right-hand side. Hirotaka Mita fires from distance. It bounces awkwardly in front of Kami Fukumoto, who can't hold on to it, and a Dialton taps in the rebound. And the goalkeeper was almost further embarrassed with eight minutes to go. On a walkabout, he gives the ball away to a Dialton, who tries from distance, but fine defending from Rikito Inoue. Good enough to save that one, but not the points. Kobe came into this one having lost once in four, and that would prove to many that they turned the corner as they faced fellow relegation rivals Gamba. The visitors had seen their form pick up recently, a tight affair with plenty at stake. We had to inch into the second quarter of the game for the first meaningful piece of action. Gotoku Sakai with the cross, Yoshinori Muto meeting it first time, Masaki Higashiguchi turning it away. Not much else to talk about in the first half, but things lit up in the second. A 52nd minute Gamba free kick, Leandro Pereira wins the aerial duel, Patrick bobbles it over the goalkeeper. Pereira was offside when the ball was played in. Moments later, he would make amends. Mitsuki Saito dinks the ball into the path of Keisuke Kurokawa. This time, everyone beats the offside trap. And Pereira taps home for the opening goal. 21 minutes left, and as the ball falls nicely for Pereira, he hammers this one hard and low from the edge of the box. Hiroki Ikura gets down quickly enough. The remaining minutes of the game were all about Vissel trying to get back into the contest. And they came oh so close in the 72nd minute. Yuya Osako heading this one across the face of the goal. But that vital touch could not be found. Just a minute later, Osako plays the ball towards the far post where two teammates are waiting. Otaro Yamaguchi gets the touch and sends it skywards. Only seven minutes left now. Muto and Gamba's Yuya Fukuda come together. And after a lengthy VAR review, the referee gives a penalty. Osako's stuttering run-up sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. And we're level with just minutes left. So here in the 93rd minute, Vissel Kobe are looking for their winner. Yutaro Oda makes a strong run through traffic. Eventually, the ball falls to Osako, who takes a touch and volleys home. All three points to Vissel Kobe with a last gasp victory. Let's round up the results. Kashima held to a draw in Sagan, as were Kawasaki, on one final score in Reisol. Three other stalemates in this round, Urawa goalless in Shonan, same goes for Nagoya and San Frecce, and the Marinos were held by the same scoreline against Consodole. Yokohama maintain a five-point gap at the top, with Kawasaki in second, both teams with a game in hand on some of their rivals. San Frecce stay in third and in good position for Champions League football next season. Cerezo move in front of Kashima, with the points separating them. Three games unbeaten, and Vissel finally move themselves out of the bottom spot. They're now 13th on 31 points. Not yet completely safe from danger, as they're just one point from the relegation playoffs. Gamba and Jubilo in the last two spots, and if they're still there come the end of the season, they will be relegated.
Thanks for spending your time with us here on the J1 League Goal Zone. We hope you enjoyed all of the great football on display. My name's Steve Dawson and we'll see you next time.